We have told about Pralat Maharaj Jari. If you want bhakti, then you must follow Pralat Maharaj. How tolerant was he? You should be tolerant. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has told, Tina Kapi Suni Chena. Taro Rapi Shadishnuna, Amanina, Manadena. So, this should be tolerant more than a tree. Yes. Giving his say, fruits, flowers, bark, everything, never once any water or anything. And in all things, are for the benefit of the people. So this must be. Then Krishna will come in your heart. Now Parikshit Maharaj is telling to Sukhdev Goswami, Prabhu, you have told the Nipriti and Pravikti Marga. You have told the history of Uttan Pada. Huh? Priya Bratha. You have told the, where the location of all the graha, planetary system. So now I want to hear something. That in the, this world, generally people do so many sins unwillingly. They want to avoid what they cannot avoid. They must do any way she. Like Pansuna path. What is Pansuna? If you are walking, so many insects are crushed. If you are taking bread, oh so many. If you are drinking water, you are drinking water pot like before. Uh, or uh, earthen pot, ghada, color. And then so many insects. Willingly, not willingly. You want to buy, but even you will have to do. I know that we should try to do prashchitta of these sinful activities. What is the best atonement? You should tell. I know that tapasya and other prashit, jagya, dhan, charity, other donations, going to tirtha, we are not pure. So tell me. And then he began to tell the history of Ajami and Nemi Muni Maharaj. You should come here. <coughs> All kinds of sin are washed by one name of Krishna. So powerful. So have a strongly faith in Krishna and John. This is the remedy of all kinds of diseases in this world. And it will fulfill your desire. You can see it here. <laughs> 
गुरुर्चंद्राय राधिकाए स्तदाल कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तदभक्ताय नमो नम फॉर माई हमल महाराज so in the beginning of sixth canto as gurudev just mentioned parichit maharaj asked to subhadev goswami that he have explained in second canto about the nibruti marga how renouncing everything uh, one can go to brahma lok and then get the liberation after that explain about prabhriti marga and also in the dynasty of priyavrata and uttan path and then explain the persons who committing so much sinful activities how they suffer in hell's planets in fifth canto so now so many people who are engaged in so much creative activities always committing sinful uh, activities and they have to suffer in hell's planets what is the way how one can be free from all these sinful actions and get ultimate liberation ultimate salvation then sugadev goswami explaining here the glories of bhakti devotional service because as gurudev mentioned in karma kanda and gyan kanda there are so many ways is given so many how to enjoy this world and also how to be uh, free from some atonement process is given two types of atonement is given in karma marga and in gyan marga in karma marga in fruitive activities when doing we commit so much sinful uh, reactions we acquire how to destroy them by doing so much jagya daan charity and austerity like this but by this type of atonement completely uh, temporarily you may get some benefit relief from the suffering but the seed is still there the seed desire to again desire to enjoy to commit sinful activity is there as if a example is given elephant goes to the river takes nicely but uh, after that coming to the bank again take the dust and throw on the body again taking so subhadev so goswami parikshit mahara asking that again and again who were doing atonement but again their coming desire is there by that again they are engaged again committing sinful activities same question also in bhagavad gita arjun also asked bhagavan sri krishna that Unwillingly, they don't want to commit what they are committing because karma is a road, road is a road. Because samud bhava, by the modes of nature, influence of modes of nature, because they are under control of the three modes of nature, they are bound to uh, again commit the sinful activities. The seed is there. So another type of atonement is there, uh, little higher by controlling all your senses, your mind, and be remaining pure. Also the one atonement process is given but that is also the seed is not completely destroyed like a bamboo bush completely born into ashes but as soon as there will be rain water will drop they will again to sprout begin to sprout the desire will again come like there is papa the prarabdha aprarabdha papa and bees the prarabdha aprarabdha karma will destroy ah uh, pap the sin somewhat but the bee the seed to commit the sinful activity is never destroyed this is only process is given that is by on alert service of the supreme lord which is gurudev explained uttama bhakti anya vyasta sunnam gyan karma dhyana pratam 
Anukulena Krishna no Silanam Bhakti Uttama. Only under guidance of a clear devotee, if one cultivates on alert devotional service, the completely the seed even is destroyed. What to speak of completely full pure devotional service? Even a semblance, even little bit someone is doing, that's also enough to destroy all the sinful reactions. Neha Vikrama Nasasti Prakte Vayana Vidya Vishwarpa Mapya Dharmasya Trayate Mahatma Maya. What to speak of committing perfectly, even one slightly doing, even his all the sinful activities, reactions is destroyed forever. So this narrative explains the glories of bhakti. Subhuta Goswami uh, narrating one story of Ajamil. The Ajamil was born in the kingdom of Kanyakubja, one city of Kanyakubja, Nagari. So in Ajamil was born as a son of a Vaidik Brahmin. Very nastic, very good Brahmin who was well behaved and always engaged in Vedic rituals. Ajamil was very pure, pure and good sanskar he had. So but when he was uh, Youth, in his youth time, he was in association with a uh, prostitute and married to the prostitute and begot so many children. Uh, Ten children was born. And the, the last son was almost five years old and when Ajamil is 88 years old. In 83 years, in 83 years old, he even uh, produced a child from that prostitute. So how much he was materialistic and materially attached so we can calculate so at the time of death came Ajamil was fully attached his younger son was youngest son was name was Narayan uh, he always was very very dear to affectionate son while he was eating while sleeping always he used to uh, keep attention on the son so always he is busy engaged in loving affairs with the son so the time came his death approached Suddenly, when the time of death came, when death comes, not gives us notice, it can come suddenly. And we lose everything at the time of death. If Krishna is telling, Mrityu Sarva Haras uh, At the time of death, everything we lose. Ajami did not know that his death is coming. Suddenly, when death came, uh, his time, he committed so much sinful activities till, uh, till then. Because he's attached to the prostitute, uh, for the pleasure of the prostitutes, he did so much sinful activity by robbery, stealing, killing others, doing all type of sinful activities. So much sinful activity are engaged. So then death came. So three Yamadutas, the message carriers, messengers of Yamaras, they came there. Very fearful form with robes, their hair was all erected and eyes were very, very big. And seeing this, Ajamil was very, very afraid. As soon as he saw this very fearful form, he was at once, because so much affection for the son, I immediately called, Oh Narayan, uh, oh my son Narayan, please come here. So as soon as he uttered the name of Narayan, the four message carrier of Vishnu, Lord Vishnu, Vaikuntha, uh, Vishnu Dutta, they appeared there. Uh, as soon as they appeared, they stopped. The Jamadutta is there, going to bind the soul from the heart of this Ajamil, uh, from the subtle body, and bind and bring it to Yamlok. At that time, the four Vishnu Dutas, they came and stopped them. You cannot bind, you cannot take this. Oh, they stopped. For the first time, these Yamadutas, they saw these very beautiful palms. Four Vishnu Dutas, lotus like eyes, uh, eyes and four handed with all their sankar, chakra, gada, padma in their arms, very beautifully, youthful. And seeing this, they stopped, you cannot touch this, uh, cannot take to Yamlok. Who are you? Oh, we are the message carrier to Yamaraj. And this is very, very sinful. Then Vishnu Dutta is asked, Oh, do you know how, why are you taking the Ajamil? Because he committed so much sinful activities. Then they explained, Those who commit so much sinful activities, we take them for punishment, like this, there's so much explanation they gave. And then they explained the Ajamil, life of Ajamil. This Ajamil was sinless, but when he was young youth. So his father sent him to the forest to collect some ingredients for the Ijagya. Uh, like kusa grass and other things. Some is for fire wood and other things. While he was going to the forest, he saw a sign, a sight. Uh, a evil character, man, drunkard man. 
uh, with a prostitute. They both are drunken and they are so much embracing, kissing, seeing all these things. So at once lost appeared in the heart of Ajami. Very strong desire came. And Krishna is telling, Chanchali mana Krishna pramati bralvat balavat dhridham Tasyam nikram manye bai ruh sudhuskara Arjuna is telling in Bhagavad Gita, very difficult to control the mind. If one can control the mind, the mind can be your friend, otherwise the mind will be your enemy. Mana ve manusyanam karanam bandha mutsya. So the mind is very very difficult to control, restless. So Ajamil was young and uh, handsome and his desire came, very strong desires came. So even he returned home, but still his desire was there. Uh, how to enjoy like that? Desire was very strong. Then after that, he kept that prostitute as maid servant and enjoyed by association with the prostitute slowly, slowly he gave up his chest wife, uh, Brahmin wife and neglected his parents and committed all type of sinful activities for pleasure of this prostitute. So that's like whole life he committed like sinful activities. The Yamadutas told that he has not done any atonement. Uh, now it's time of death. So he is to bound to suffer in hell's planets. Then the Vishnu explained, Oh, you should remember, you don't know uh, the principles of dharma. Ajamil uttered the name of Lord Narayan. Uh, one who utters the name of Lord Narayan, uh, at once he was free from all the sinful activities he done in this life. Not in this life, even millions of lives, sinful activity reactions is destroyed by uttering one name of Narayan. What to speak of pure name, even the Namabhas. Namabhas is a certain space when somebody is not avoiding the offense, no offense is there, no Namaparad is there. Not committing any sin, to, uh, any offense to holy name, but not pure name yet achieved. So Ajamil was very, very suffering so much. Uh, other than he did not commit any sinful active, any offense to the holy name. Especially the chance is there, like the glory, thinking the glory of holy name to be imaginary, and the please interpretation of the meaning of the holy name, Arthabad and Nam Bolekapuri. These things never came in his mind. So he was free from all Nam Aparat and he chanted the holy name. That's why all the sinful reactions at once destroyed. Then Vishnu Dutta explained the glories of holy name to uh, the Yamadutas. They explained, oh, the holy name is very, very powerful. Uh, if chants Sadha Hedayava Bhugavara Naramatra Tare Krishna Nam, even chanting with attention, attentively or inattentively, even Sankitya Paribhasam Kyova Hedanam. Even by indicating, not directly even indicating the Supreme Lord Narayan, even indicating something, but the name is uttered anyway. Sankitya Paribhasam, by joking. Uh, sometimes the Muslims or others don't want to chant the name, but they criticize like joking. Uh, even Stova, Sankitya Paribhasam, Stova. Stova means by we sing sometimes so much musical, uh, more attention to the musical instruments and other things, not giving attention to the pure holy name, not remembering. This is also like this. And negligence, in negligence chanting holy name. By this, if you are chants the holy name, uh, even all these sinful reactions is fully destroyed. And pure name, if one chants, he directly sees Krishna himself and Krishna frame arise in the heart. So like hearing these glories, Ajamil was astonished. What is the glories of devotional service? He came to know. And when he wanted to speak something, then the Yamadutta and Vishnu they all disappeared. Uh, then he realized, he repented so much. Alas, how I wasted my life. How I enjoyed this body like a stool. Uh, I enjoyed the body so much and committed so much act sinful activities. See, all repented what he did mistakes. And then he went to Haridwar took shelter of Vishnu temple and devotees and started severely doing chanting holy name and cultivating Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Svaranam, Padasevanam, all the nightful devotional service. And after the end, time came and he gave up the uh, this body in the river Ganges and pure body, his spiritual form appeared and the same Vishnu Dutas appeared with a golden chariot. Uh, they took Ajamila's body to the spiritual world. So this is the glories of devotional service, 
how even very very sinful ajami chanting even namavas not pure name if he could get the vaikuntha if under guidance of pure devotee uh, like gurudev tan naam roop charitadi sukirtanam smritya kamen rasana manasi niyojya tishtana baje kadanu ragi jananu gami kalam nay akhilam itu padesh sal so rupose pad is telling that krishna's name the naam for qualities all under guidance of a pure devotee rashi vaishna is staying in vrindavan remembering uh, completely under guidance if one is fully engaged in devotional service then what will not achieve will definitely achieve the more than vaikuntha even golok vrindavan will enter into the eternal service of radha krishna dor pramanande Devotees, 
he engaged his nose in smelling the tulsi offered to the Lord, his tongue in tasting only Krishna prasadam, and his words in glorifying the activities of the Lord, his feet, his legs in walking to the temple of the Lord, his body engaged in the service of the deities, his eyes absorbed in the beauty of the deities, and in this way, by his full absorption, he left a lot of the management to his ministers and he was absorbed in the service of the deities. And by his uh, ruling, his entire kingdom was Krishna conscious. Even though he possessed the opulence of the entire world, he considered his great opulence, uh, all of his wealth, his treasury, his elephants, his horses, his palaces, everything no more significant than a dry straw. Because he engaged all of his opulences in the service of the deity, he was always detached. And as a result, his entire kingdom was happy and Krishna conscious. He observed a Kadasi Brat for an entire year. And now the year was coming to an end, and he fasted for three whole days and nights. And then it was now coming to the time of Paran, or observing the breaking of the Ikadasi fast. First, when he rose in the morning, he worshipped the Brahmanas, he worshipped the deities, he bathed and dressed them in very beautiful garments and ornaments, performed arti and fed the Brahmins sumptuously, and then with their permission, he was uh, about to take the Padan. And just at that moment, an unexpected guest arrived, who is Durvasa Rishi. Durvasa Rishi is known in the uh, scriptures as a great Brahma Yogi or uh, a sort of an impersonalist, Brahmin, powerful yogi. Actually, Durvasa Muni is a pure devotee of the Lord. He met the gopis, he met the cowherd boys, but he's so wonderful that he doesn't mind taking the part of the bad guy in order to glorify Krishna's devotees, and in this case, Maharaj Ambarish. So Durvasa Rishi came, just a few minutes, like 40 minutes before Maharaj Amrish had to complete his pattern. Otherwise, without taking pattern at the exact right time, the Akadasi vow is not complete and one does not get the result of bhakti, even if he's done the austerities of Akadasi. So, Maharaj Amrish knew the Vedic etiquette of worshipping a brahmana, he seated him, worshipped him, offered him prasadam, but the rishi said that he would go and take bath first in the jamuna. During that time, it was just coming to the moment when he'd had to take the pardon. So he knew exactly what to do, being a pure Vedic king. So consulting and having it confirmed by his brahmana ministers, who were also very pure, he decided that when one observes a complete fast, one can break the fast by taking water, which can be considered eating and not eating. And especially, he took the Charanamrita of the Lord. In the meantime, Durvasa Rishi, in his uh, trance of meditation, understood that Maharaj Ambarish had taken something before feeding him. When he reached the palace, having understood this, he became so furious by false pride, false ego, that I was not respected and worshipped properly. I hardly ever go to the homes of Grihastas, but now, by my mercy, I've done so, and I'm not respected properly. So he pulled out a bunch of hair in his great fury. His face turned red, his eyes were red, his eyebrows were up in a great rage and he pulled out a bunch of his hair and threw it on the floor 
And what happened? Out of that bunch of hair came a giant demoness named Kritya. And she was so powerful and so fiery that she could only be compared with the fire at the time of universal devastation. She went running towards Maharaj Ambrish to destroy him. But he didn't budge an inch. He was absorbed in meditating on the pastimes of the Lord. And he had, he had just been performing austerities in Madhavan. So his worshipful deity is Rajendra Nandan Krishna himself. So he was absorbed in the Lord. He wasn't the slightest bit disturbed when this demoness came charging at him. Rather, he was weeping in ecstasy, thinking of the Lord. But the Lord had already promised that anyone who's my pure devotee, I give him my disc. And when he's in the slightest danger, my disc, my Sudarshan Chakra, goes to protect him. So, Sudarshan Chakra immediately was sent by Lord Krishna and instantly burnt that fire demon to ashes. At which point, the Sudarshan Chakra went right for Maharaj Ambrish. And he immediately fled in fear for his life and ran everywhere, up the mountains, in the caves, in the water, everywhere, all over the universe. And he was being burnt and just about almost touched by the Sudarshan Chakra. Finally, he reached Brahmalok and took shelter of Lord Brahma to save him. And Brahma told him, first he went to Brahma Loka, and Brahma told him, I cannot save you, because at the time of universal destruction, just by the mere movement of his eyebrows, Krishna's expansion as Lord Vishnu destroys everything. So Brahma, myself, Lord Shiva, and all the other demigods are fully surrendered to his will. Lord Shiva said the same thing when Devasamuni went to Shivalo to try and get protection from him. So they recommended that go to Vishnulo and maybe he will save you, maybe he will protect you. So there's a Vishnu Loka in this universe called Rama Priya Vaikuntha. So Devasamuni went there and he fell at the feet of Lord Vishnu and begged to be saved. He expected to be saved because he considered himself a great, powerful Brahmin. And after all, Namo Brahmanya Devaya, Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha. The Lord is the well-wisher of the Brahmins, first and foremost. So, to his surprise, the Lord told him that you're trying to kill my devotee, I consider that you're trying to kill me. Because I'm not independent. I'm living only in the heart of my devotee, and my devotee is living in my heart. He knows no one but me, and I know no one but him in reciprocation. As they surrender to me, I reward them re accordingly. So one who has no other shelter but me, does not depend on anyone but me, he doesn't depend on his own strength, his own will, his own mind at all. I give him all protection and I live in him. So I consider that you wanted to give me pain. But wait a minute. I'm a great Brahmana and he's only a great husband. He should have respected me. So Krishna told him that your, all of your Brahminical powers, all of your tapasya, all of your knowledge, is all a waste. When tapasya or austerities and knowledge is used by a wrong person for a wrong purpose, against, especially against the devotee, that austerity and that knowledge serves to destroy the person who employs it. And that's why you're now in so much danger. He did so much for me. Amrish Maharaj does so much for me. He's fully surrendered to me. He gave up his affection for his wife, his children, his treasury, his, all of his family members, all of his possessions, his entire citizenship, and is fully devoted to me. And what have you done? He's so absorbed in me 
that when your monstrous fire came to attack him, he just stood there, absorbed in me without, so tolerant, as Gurudev said, tolerant like a tree, always giving to others and never ever disturbed. But you, you consider yourself a great powerful Brahmana? But as soon as you saw my Sudarshan Chakra, you immediately trembled. Your whole body trembled and you fled for your life without any thought of me at all. You were just thinking of your own body. But he didn't respect me. I'm a Brahmin and he didn't respect me. He respected Bhakti. Maharaj Amrish had to consider that now I have a Brahmana guest in my house. If I disrespect him, then surely, according to the Vedic scriptures, I'll go to hell. But then again, if I don't complete my Ekadasi Vrat properly, then I'll lose my Bhakti. Now if I lose my Bhakti, even if I'm in heaven, I might as well be in hell. And if I have my Bhakti, then even if I'm in hell, I'll feel like I'm in a much greater situation than heaven. Gurudev shared an incident that when he was in the Bombay hospital, one of his disciples approached him and said, Oh Gurudev, my son is critically ill. Please bless him that he'll be healthy again. And Gurudev said, I asked her, do you want me to bless him with bhakti or with good health? Oh Gurudev, please bless him with good health. Gurudev said she was so foolish, she didn't realize that if one has bhakti, everything else is there. As our Prabhupada used to say, when your $100 problem is solved, then your $10 problems are automatically solved. So now Lord Vishnu is telling uh, Dravasa Rishi that he didn't disrespect you, he was respecting, and who, why should anybody respect you? You're not even an actual brahmana trying to give me pain by giving pain to my devotee. Whereas he was honoring Bhakti Devi by taking the pardon. I think it's better if you just go and surrender to him if you want to be saved. I cannot save you. In the meantime, while all this was going on for an entire year, Maharaj Amrish, being an actual devotee, was never angry at Durvasa Rishi. He was so humble he had such Vaishnava talk that he blamed himself. We generally blame, I generally blame others that happened because of my own karma. Whereas he, even though he was faultless, he was blaming himself for a suffering that was brought upon Durvasa Rishi by his own self. And so he fasted the entire year, drinking only water and repenting and lamenting. And he was praying that just on my account, because of my uh, disrespect, this poor Brahmana has to suffer now at the hands of the Sudarshan Chakra. So he prayed to the Sudarshan Chakra that, O oh Sudarshan Chakra, you are none different from Krishna himself. You are the beginning of everything. You're the source of light. You're Krishna's eyes. You're the source of all the senses, the source of all the planetary systems. If I have done any devotional service and the Lord is pleased with me, if I have done any spiritual pious activities, then please give my pious activities to this Brahmana and please don't burn him. So now he's been ordered by the Lord to go to Maharaj Ambrish. So he immediately fell at the feet of Maharaj Ambrish, who had been praying to him and said, yes, take all the results of my pious activity that once be delivered. So by this, Dravasa Muni realized the power of a Kadasi Vrat. He realized that Maharaj Ambrish is actually a great devotee. And Maharaj Ambrish immediately gave him a big feast of Krishna Prasad, and then Dravasa Rishi asked him that you please take. And Dravasa Rishi then left, took permission and left, going through the skyways and glorifying Maharaj Ambrish. So there are so many lessons here. One, just as Prahlad Maharaj never became angry or blamed his father, and he prayed for the deliverance of his father, so Maharaj Ambrish did the same. Also, by his pure devotion, everywhere he went he illuminated, just like a light bulb 
when it's connected with the powerhouse, it illumines everywhere. So therefore, his whole kingdom was Krishna conscious. He was absorbed externally, all of his senses in the service of the deity, and internally, he was in Baba Bhakti, and his palace was in Madhuvan. So he was absorbed internally in the Vrindavan pastimes of the Lord. In fact, the Lord told Durvasa Muni that even though I'm full of so many opulences, I don't care to, to enjoy my opulences without my devotees. So therefore, he's a Braj devotee. Krishna gives up his opulences and forget his opulences and takes pleasure in the association of devotees. So this is also the glory of a Kadasi Vrat. When one son, a Kadasi, Gurudev said, this is not a day. This day of Kadasi is not a day. It's Krishna himself. And Krishna was thinking, how can I save all these fallen souls and wrapped in sinful activities? Yes, I will become a day. And anyone who follows the simple process of that day, he will be delivered. Just as Radharani came from Krishna's left side, a Kadasi also emanated from the body of Sri Krishna himself. So this is the glory of Maharaj Ambarish, the glory of a Kadasi Vrat, also the glory of Dravasa Rishi, who was willing to be the bad guy, didn't care for his own um, glory, just like Kai Kai didn't care to be hated by the universe for the satisfaction and glorification of Ram. So, Maharaj Amparish Shiki Jai, Shilagrude Shiki Jai, Shiki Jai. Really? Maharshi Durbasha was very high class of devotee. And directly everywhere he wants to glorify Hawks. And we wanted to glorify Ambarish Maharaj. And he did so. Because we see that Maharshi Durbasa lives in Vrindavan. Even he has given a boon to Radhika that if you will cook and anyone will take prasadam by your cooking, he will long live and he will defeat his all enemies. When Krishna went to Dwarka, he also went there and he glorified him. So, as a tree, he went to Varish Maharaj and so that how he is and he told himself, Oh, Ananta Dasanam Mahattam Madhyame Vishnu. He is very fine. Oh, today I have seen how glory are these Vaishnava. More than I am Brahma Yogi. I can cause, I can give any benediction, but they are superior. So, quickly he went to Ambarish Maharaj and glorified him. When he was running, and Sudarshan Chakra was following him, Sudarshan Chakra in a minute he can at once cut his head. But why in one year he could not cut it? Because Ambarish Maharaj was there praying, O oh, Sudarshan Maharaj, you should not cut it. And secondly, Durvasa was really a bhakta. So he was showing fear to, uh, to Maharaj Durva, uh, Durvasa, but actually, he does not want to kill. That is why. So there are so many mysteries in this. After hearing this, Maharaj Parikshit asked him, Maharaj Sukhdev Goswami, that we heard that how Vrindrasu, at the time of death, he was praying Krishna Bhakti. 
अहम हरे तो पाद मूलम दासान दासो भवितास्तु भविता मन स्मरे तास्तुणीत बात कर्म करो अजात पक्षा इव मातरम खगा तन्ने जथा पक्ष तर सुधा प्रिय प्रिय विशुतम विषय लाइक ए प्रिया इन दि सेपरेशन ऑफ ए इज मोस्ट बिलक आई वॉन्ट टू बी लाइक दैट सो प्लीज टेल हिज सम ऑस्पिशस लाइफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ महाराज चित्रकेतु एंड देन हेट बिगेन टू हिस्ट्री योग May he be pleased by our endeavors here at the Bhakti Festival in Houston. I also offer my own obeisances to the Lord Sri Mai Dikshuguru, His Divine Grace, Bhakti of Dr. Shri Prabhupada. May he also be pleased by our endeavors to spread Krishna consciousness here in Houston. I also offer my obeisances to all the assembled Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, Pramacharis, and Yasis, and all guests who have come to hear something about Krishna consciousness. So, how is everybody doing? <laughs> this uh, Krishna consciousness is very nice. Shri Goswami, he has given me a shrishta. By his preaching, he became perfect. You know there are nine processes of bhakti, shravan, kirtan, vishnu, shmaran, parasir, vishnu, 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 and so on. So Sukadeva Goswami became perfect just by speaking Vishnu Kata. And Parikshit Maharaj became perfect just by hearing this Kata. So if you are also hearing, the day is speaking, we can all become perfect by this process, because he is already perfect. <laughs> but, of course, the audience should be very attentive. Many of you know the story of Lokarna and Vindukari, he gave Bhagavad Kata. But only Dundakari was delivered. The others weren't delivered. Why was that? <laughs> they were falling asleep. They are thinking about other things. So everyone should be very attentive to Krishna Ta. It's a very important thing. It's like taking medicine. You can pop so many pills in your mouth, but if it's not absorbed, does it do any good? So we should hear with uh, rapt attention and well, that is why that's important. That's part of the lecture. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bhakti bhav Baram. <laughs> so, in order to understand that you are ready to hear Krishna Kata, I would like to just put the level of bhakti bhav on this barometer by everybody saying Hari Bol very loudly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't have it on. Could you do that once more? <laughs> All right, that's level six. And the barometer actually wants to get up to number seven. So one more time. All right, so we're ready for Krishna. <clears throat> so this story is not just a story. This is a history. The Puranas are histories. They're not mythology as some people have ascribed to the Vedas and Puranas. This is actual history of the universe. So when we hear it, we should know these activities took place many, many thousands and thousands of years, years ago. But they're factual. They're real. So the story of Chitraketu is uh, a very convoluted story. There are many uh, different uh, leelas which come into play. So I will begin when Maharaj Chitraketu was a king 
and had 10,000 wives. 10 million? So the million wives, sorry. <laughs> so, um, even though he had so many wives, still uh, he was devoid of a son. And everyone who is king wants a son because he has to uh, pass on his kingdom to the son. So he was very much in a lamentable condition of life. So when Angira Rishi came to his kingdom and met him, uh, he prayed for the boon that he would have a son. And uh, the Rishi uh, blessed him uh, that he would have a son, but that son would cause both happiness and lamentation. And so he named his son, he said, you can give him the name uh, Harsha Marsha. Harsha Shoka. Harsha Shoka. So Harsha means pleasure or happiness, and Shok means uh, misery. This, uh, yes. So uh, the Rishi prepared some uh, prasad and gave it to the chief queen. The uh, chief queen took the prasad and in due course of time a son was born. And Chief Chitakitu became very pleased, very happy, very, very overjoyed. And now his desires are fulfilled. Of course, if you have heard and read Srimad Bhagavatam, you know as soon as we desire happiness, then we open the doors for the distress to enter. Everything in life uh, is destined. What we are accumulating in this life has accrued from our karma in the last life. So. We have to deal with whatever we are given in life with a very humble attitude. Happiness and distress are going to come just like uh, waves in the river. Sometimes the waves are very big, sometimes very small. So we should be very tolerant for any unfortunate things and also not be disturbed by excessive happiness. So, uh, the name of the sun again was? Uh, so then what happened? The co-wives became very envious because all the attention of the king went to his first, first wife and uh, therefore they made a plot amongst themselves to actually kill the son. So this happens. And uh, what happened? the poor child had to bear the brunt of their envy and therefore poison was given to him and the son expired. So when the, maid, and when the nurses found out, when the king's wife found out, and then when the king found out, there was shoka, great crying and happiness and misery. So although initially the son provided so much pleasure to the king, uh, in the end he became very miserable. But why has destiny done this to me? So sometimes people think like this, why have I become the object of misery when misery strikes? What is the reason for all this? And then some people have no answer, but because we ascribe to the Vedic Praman, we know there is karma, whatever we get, we deserve to do our activities in the previous life. But most of the people in the world don't even understand that. Uh, and they write books like, Why Bad Things Happen to Good People. They don't <laughs> conceive of the law of karma. But we are all blessed because we understand the law of karma simply by reading Bhagavad Gita. So, but then what happened? Uh, the Rishis came back, both Angira and Nara Rishi, and by the power of their uh, austerity, they were able to revive the king's son. So, to the amazement of all, this boy, what's his name? Huh? He came back to life. And when he came back to life, he just started speaking Atmatatwa, the science of the soul. The science of the soul means we have not just one father and mother, we have not just one life, but we are falling in a chain of birth and death, life after life, according to our destiny. So, Harsha Shoka said, how can you claim to be my parents when I have had so many parents previously? I will have so many parents in the future. Uh, we should know the soul is without designation. It is not white, it is not black, it is not... Uh, male, it is not female, it is not American, Russian, it is simply part and parcel of Krishna, Jivarasarup, Nitya Krishna Das. So the young boy 
just after being born and dying, came back to life and started speaking the science of the soul to the queens and the king. So they all became fully enlightened and Krishna consciousness by the grace of Nagrishi. So Nagrishi figures in the Shrimad Bhagavatam in so many different pastimes. He's the incarnation of devotional service, and we know Prahlad is his disciple, Dhruva is his disciple, and also Chichukitu Maharaj. So Chichukitu Maharaj took mantra from Narayamuni. Narayamuni is his spiritual master, so he enlightened him and gave him one mantra to chant that is given. Uh, that mantra was Om Namo Mante Bhagavatubhyas Vashri Bhagavati Pradyumyani Vriyala Namasha Krishna Chal. So he was chanting and chanting his mantra, Guru Mantra, like all of you, you although you, you have taken initiation or are about to receive initiation, Shamsi Gurudev, you'll be asked to chant that mantra every day. So by that chanting, what happened within one week, uh, Maharaj Chitraketu actually became elevated. He became the king of the Vidyadharas, very elevated uh, devas. And within a few days after that, continuing the chances, Mantra, his Ishtadeva was revealed to him, and his Ishtadeva was who? Anybody else? Sankarshan. Sankarshan is Balaram. Balaram is this beautiful form like Krishna, but white, with um, lotus feet, lotus eyes, everything transcendental. So, Jitikedu himself had full darshan of the Supreme Lord. And he offered so many prayers, he received so many blessings. He began to, uh, eventually after meeting the Lord, travel all over the universe, and uh, many, many thousands of years he was living. I'm not qualified to be here, <coughs> but let me pray to the Lord's feet of my Dikshvur Maharaj, Nitya Lila Bhavishnu, Ashtuttara Lipta Shish Maharaj, Shilabhakti Ranta Swami Maharaj, Prabhupada, and equal number of Sastandala Pranams, the Lord's feet of my Shikshan Sanyas Gurudev, Om Vishnu Pad, Ashtuttara Lipta Shish Maharaj, Bhakti Ranta Nayi Swami Maharaj. <coughs> let me take shelter of all of our predecessor, previous Acharyas, Guru Varga, and all the Simul Vaishnava devotees, Sanyasika, and guests assembled. <coughs> I'm remembering this year in Navadweep, at the time of Lord Purnima, after a quick round, Blue Dave asked me, what would you like to speak on? And I had missed one of the quick rounds due to some false information where the party was going to go next. I, I, didn't, I didn't go to Radhakun, and so I wasn't fresh in my memory. I said, anything but Radhakun, Guru. I'm, I'm not prepared to speak on that. But after I sat down for a while, I don't know if it was Rajan's Prabhu's. <laughs> it was, okay, it was Guru. <laughs> Guru asked me to speak on Radhakun. <laughs> so 
So Gurudev has two is to speak about Chitrit K2 Maharaj tonight. So I'll do the second part. <clears throat> Maharaj Prikshit, hearing from Sukadeva Goswami, is very astonished to hear that <clears throat> a demon such as Rikshashura uh, was actually a devotee. How could a demon be uh, devotional and have devotional qualities? So he narrated the further life history of Chichiketu Maharaj. Chichiketu, <clears throat> being renounced after having association with his Gurudev Narada Muni and receiving transcendental mantras, uh, was traveling. <clears throat> and in his travels, he came to Kailash. And there he saw Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva had Parvati sitting on his lap amongst 